Good morning. morning. Merry Christmas. Christmas. Does anybody know what today is? It's Sunday. (laughs) Today happens to be the fifth day of Christmas. So, on the fifth day of Christmas, my true love gave to me five golden rings, four calling birds, three French hens, two turtle doves, and a partridge in a pear tree. I love doing that. (laughs) Amen. Um, There's a lot of things. Welcome as we worship our our Lord and Savior today as we still celebrate Christmas because there is 12 days of Christmas um, that we'll be celebrating throughout the week in that regard. There are some announcements I want to make sure and point out. We'll be working on Mr. Evans' house this afternoon at 2 p.m. doing some painting and some sanding if anybody wants to join with us in that. On January 1st, New Year's Day, uh, as well as Saturday, we will also be there from 9 a.m. to about noon. So Wednesday, um, today at 2, or Wednesday and Saturday at 9 a.m. If you want to help work on the Mission House, uh, Mr. Evans' house, uh, please stop by and help out. Uh, we, we'd love to have you come and do some painting or some sanding and do some work there. Um, Thursday, uh, Thursday is going to be a sad day because we have to take down the Christmas tree and stuff. And our Chris, you know, Christmas at High Street has to come down. So if you have time on Thursday at 10 a.m., We'll be taking down some of the Christmas decorations, so please um, come and help do that as well. Next Sunday will be a blessing of the shepherds, our shepherding ministry. So if you're a shepherd, please come and be a part of that, and, and it'll be a great thing to look forward to as we, we bless our shepherds for the new year. And then also I got a letter from the um, police, uh, uh, the office of the police here in Franklin. This is a letter that really shouldn't have gone to us, though. It should have gone to Troop 17. Our Boy Scouts um, provided food. Um, they had some leftover food after one of their events, and they took it to the police officers, and they, they really ate it up and enjoyed it. And so we got a nice letter from the chief of police. Being no other announcements, we're going to start worship. But we're going to start worship first with a time of holy conferencing. Sounds serious, doesn't it? All it means is that we're going to prayerfully think about some things together. In, in, in this regard, we're going to think about the music. Um, I kind of knew that the Sunday after Christmas was going to be a low Sunday. You know what I mean? So I I wanted to invite you to choose the songs, the Christmas songs. Obviously, it has to be in the hymnal, um, but but, but we want to do some kind of Christmas song that that we might have. What what Christmas song would you like to sing? We need three of them. All right, I had a number, 246. That's Joy to the World. Okay. Give me another song. Need all th- I need all three. We're going to do all three. That way, th- this, this is not quite Stump the Chump with, with, with Mike back here playing piano. <laughs> we're going to give him a little bit of headway. What other two songs are we going to sing today for Christmas? One that, that you like. One, it's your pick. We're doing holy conferencing. When the Spirit is leading you to say, this is the song we need to use in worship today, you know. Angels we have heard on high. The first Noel. Okay, angels we have heard on high. And then the first Noel will be the other one. Okay, so the order, just to let Mike know, (laughs) is going to be angels we have heard on high, first Noel, and then joy to the world is the last one. Okay, so our first song is going to be angels we have heard on high. It's 200 and something. There we go. It's 238. Will you stand and join in singing together, Angels We've Heard on High?
us pray together. Lord, as we hear the angels sing, as we hear you come among us as incarnate, as Christ, as God with us, as Emmanuel, Lord, it makes us want to sing glory. It makes us want to shout hallelujah. It makes us want to bring you all that we can, our praise, our thanksgiving. Lord, receive what we bring today. You are the audience of this service. You are the one that we are worshiping. Guide us, we pray, as we worship. Amen. As you remain standing, let us join together in affirming our faith with the Nicene Creed, found on page 880 in your hymnals. It's a little bit longer than the Apostles' Creed and goes into a whole lot more theology. <clears throat> Let us affirm our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. <clears throat> As we gather today, and, and because we're a smaller group, I'm going to ask that we share this morning some. What, what joys do you have that you, what, what was a Christmas joy? Did anybody get something really cool for Christmas? Yay! Josh got engaged on Christmas Eve. Josh Turner and Amy Davis are now engaged. That's a pretty cool Christmas gift, yeah. yeah. Others? Other joys? Billy? Oh, Margaret, I'm sorry. I, I couldn't tell whose hand it was. Oh, sweet. Jason's graduating boot camp soon, and Margaret's going to get to go see it. Awesome. Other joys? All right, how about some kids? Any of the kids got a good joy this Christmas? Yeah, what was your joy? You got an Xbox. <laughs> awesome. 
Rejoice for the Xbox. Amen. Anybody else? Well, I do. Oh, huh? You. <laughs> what is? <laughs> Depends on who you ask. <laughs> We'll talk later, you know. <laughs> so, uh, we do have many joys to share. Let's also raise our concerns. There are many in our community who experienced blue Christmas, who had times when they were worried or concerned. Jeannie Council was in the hospital. I think she's back home now, but we want to keep Jeannie in our prayers. Gary Hamilton um, needs our prayers as his leg's getting further infected. Ray Maya's grandmother, Josh Schaefer, uh, Johnny Pollard, who came home, we want to keep him in our prayers. And also Galen Butler, his, his procedure went well. We're getting thankful for that as a joy. Are there others that you'd make mention, other concerns? Oh, uh, your, your dad, that's right, Glenda. Yeah, we want to keep Glenda's dad, Kenneth Gay, in our prayers. What happens when I don't write things down? Let's take these then our joys and our concerns to our Lord and Savior. Let us go to God in prayer. O oh Christ, you are everywhere, but right now we worship you here. We worship you as our Lord, our Savior, our Messiah, as the child who came down from heaven to be born in a manger, in a stable. Beloved God, we worship you because of all that you are and what you have done, and yet we are not even worthy to do that. So hear us as we bring our joys, our thanksgiving. Hear us as we bring our tears, our worries, our days of pain and angst. So much has happened and so much will happen, Lord. And we as human beings have anxious hearts that look to the future and worry about the regrets of the past. Christ, free us from this. Christ, bless us with your presence. Christ, prepare us. For you are the way, the truth, and the life. We ask that your spirit would be near, that you would lead us, that you would guide us, that you would empower us as we yearn for the fulfillment of the kingdom that began so long ago on that Christmas. Be born in us as we pray the prayer you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Thank you. 
As the ushers come forward, as the ushers come forward, let us respond to God's good news. Above the clamor and all of the noise, that there is goodness, that there is mercy, that there is love. Magnificent and merciful God, we come to worship you this morning at the close of one year and the threshold of a new one. Our faithfulness in this year behind has not been all that we wished it to be, and we know the road ahead of us holds many new challenges and opportunities to the followers you desire. May the giving of our gifts this morning help firm our resolve to be the disciples of Christ that you desire for the world, full of compassion, mercy, and love and kindness. May we, like your son Jesus, be found dwelling in your presence and love when others come looking for us. In Christ's steadfast love we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's join together in singing uh, the first Noel, hymn number 245.
At this time, we invite all the children to come forward for the children's time. You got a new watch? Neat. Are you going to time me? <laughs> I think some people do time me during my sermons. Yeah, it's an apple? Okay. Okay, cool, cool. Good morning, everybody. Did you guys get, like, packages or something this week? No boxes that were wrapped that you got to open? Yeah, you had packages? Presents? Oh, you had lots of boxes? Yeah? <laughs> now, let me get this right. Just making sure I understand things right. Okay, so... Christmas is a special day because it's somebody's birthday, right? Whose birthday is it? It's Jesus' birthday. So we all got boxes, and we wrapped them up, and we put presents for Jesus inside, right? And they were for you? They weren't for Jesus? They were for you guys? Yeah. Well, that's what we do. And I got this idea in my head that, that we probably should have had a, a box at least that we that we maybe opened up and that we put stuff in it for Jesus. What do you think? Because it's his birthday. So the first thing we're going to do is what? What, what, what? Usually when I get gifts for people, I try to get them something they need. Does Jesus need anything? No. <laughs> He's got the whole world in his hands. Jesus doesn't need anything at all, does he? So maybe we should get him something he wants, right? Yeah, we should give Jesus something he wants. What, what, what would be something you think Jesus wants? What do you think? Some what? Sausage? Okay. <laughs> Sausage for Jesus. Okay. What else are we going to give Jesus? I like that. What else are you going to give Jesus? Ham too? Okay. You're hungry, huh? Okay. Mm -hmm. What would you ladies think we should give Jesus? Or Parker, what do you guys think? Maybe our give them our lives. That's a good idea. Mm -hmm. We can do that in a variety of ways, too. Mm -hmm. How about it? What, what else can we give them? Chocolate. Okay. You're going to go back to that one? Okay. Parker, what do you think? Anything? No? Not sure? Okay. Anything, Julie? You got? All right. Here's what I think. I think what Jesus wants, because Jesus chooses to want this, is Jesus wants us to worship and we can do that through, through sharing our love. We can do that through, through obeying and through listening to the scriptures and, and, and reading the Bible. We can do that through our prayers. Sometimes we, people do it as worship, not even here, but we do it with our hands when we go and help other people in their houses or, or when we help other people with, with, with the, their need for food, like sausage or ham or chocolate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When we do that, we're worshiping Jesus and we're giving Jesus a gift. Now, I don't know about your birthday, but on my birthdays, after we get the presents and we wrap them all up, we usually sing. Ready to sing? We're going to sing happy birthday to Jesus. Ready? I'm serious. You guys are looking at me like I'm nuts. You guys are going to sing too. Okay, ready? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Nobody's going to say any more? Okay. <laughs> Good. Awesome. Let's pray together. God, we give you our lives. We give you all that we have. Not because you need it, but because you give us the privilege to give it. Amen. One more thing, guys, before you guys leave. When we were picking songs, Christmas songs, everybody got to pick, but I didn't hear any kids pick a song. What song would you guys want to sing? What? ABCs? <laughs> All right, guys. You all ready? A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T U V W X Y and Z. Now I know my ABCs. Next time, won't you sing with me? Good job. 
Excellent, guys. Excellent. Okay. Asher, you're a hoot. You really are. Our scripture this morning comes from Psalm 148. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his host. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, you highest heavens and all you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord. For he cometh and they were created. He established them forever and ever. He fixed their bounds which cannot be passed. Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters and all deeps. Fire, hail, snow, and frost, stormy wind fulfilling his command. Mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild animals and all cattle, creeping things and flying birds. Kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the earth, young men and women alike, old and young together. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His glory is above earth and heaven. He has raised up a horn for his people, praise for all his faithful, for all the people of Israel who are close to him, praise the Lord. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray together. Beloved Lord, we want to encounter you. We want to meet you where you are here today in these words, in this scripture, in what, what is happening here. So God, forgive us of our prideful nature. Forgive us where we seem to think that we're the ones in control. And help us to let go, to allow you to flow through us, even in our worship today. All through you, Jesus Christ, the child who came in that manger so long ago. Amen. Just who in the worldwide crazy do you think you are? I mean, really, that, that, that God wants you to be here and worship and do this kind of stuff? Do you really think that, that that's what, what's going on here? I mean, how crazy do we, how prideful, how boastful, how, how self-important are we that we think God needs us? Because the reality is that God doesn't need us. And that even in the very act of worship, we are broken and sinful. There's a Hindu prayer that kind of catches what I'm trying to say here. In the Hindu prayer, it says, Lord, forgive me for these three sins due to my human limitations. Thou art everywhere, and yet I worship you here. Thou art formless, and yet I worship you in these forms. Thou do not need my praise, and yet I offer you these prayers and salutations. Lord, forgive me for these three sins that are due to my human limitations. You see, the reality is that God, when we talk about God, who God is, God is, well, let's, let's borrow Isaiah in the Christmas passages. God is wonderful, counselor, mighty God, almighty prince of peace. He is eternal father. Did you hear anything in that that says human beings need to be included? We don't. We are not needed. God does not need us, and yet 
God chooses, chooses to want to be with us. God chooses to love us. God chooses to come down among us. And by that choice, the Christmas miracle happens. By that choice, we encounter God in the flesh, Emmanuel. By that choice, God creates and prepares a way for us to offer praise. A way for us to worship. A way for us to praise the Lord. You see, in Psalm 148, that's how it's set up. It's set up to tell us who God is and who we are. It's set up to tell us what God is doing and what can be done through that salvation that God offers. In Psalm 148, it has all these wonderful, exuberant ways of praising God, symbols and and musical instruments. Even sea monsters are mentioned. Praise the Lord. And then it tells us why. Praise the Lord because of who God is. Your name is above all other names. You are God. You are God. And when we encounter Jesus Christ at Christmas, we are encountering God. God in the flesh. True God of true God, as the Nicene Creed says. We're encountering the God who came down from heaven to be with us. In the Greek, they call it this kenosis, this movement from heaven to earth to change, to offer salvation, to encounter people. God makes a choice and offers us a path to praise God because of who God is. This is God that we're talking about. This is Jesus Christ, our Messiah, our Savior, the Eternal Father. This is God. I don't know other words for it, for who He is. He is God, and He's doing something. In the Psalm 148, it says, praise God, because God took a rambling horde of people and made them His nation, Israel. God came down at Christmas, and God offers us light and salvation. In the midst of the darkest of times, God provided a light, a candle. In the midst of all of our troubles and all of our griefs and all of our woes and all of our pain, God offered a healer, a great physician. God offered salvation. And God is to be praised because of who God is and because of what God is doing. God is offering salvation, offering to us a path, a way of love and light. When I was in college, I heard this analogy that really kind of was crazy. It went something like this. Imagine that a human being scientifically made themselves transform into a single-cell bacteria to go to a dirty golf ball and save all the other bacteria on the golf ball. Doesn't sound all that cool, does it? That's Christmas. God, in all of God's glory, Jesus Christ, in all that Jesus Christ is, stepping off of the throne of heaven to come and be in the flesh, to be human, to be man, to to be vulnerable, to be able to be hurt, to be able to cry, to be able to be killed. This is the Christmas story, and this is the reason that when we come to church, that we come and we worship and we sing songs and we offer praise, it's not because God needs it. It's because God invites us to be a participant in the kingdom of God. Like shepherds of old or wise men, we have been invited to come and to share in this glory, to share in this wonderful offering, to share in what God is doing. 
Who do we think we are? Who in the worldwide of crazy am I? Because of Christmas, I know who I am. We know who we are. We're the ones that were invited. We feel called only because we heard God calling. We were the ones who heard the story, who heard the angel's song. And instead of ignoring it as the rambling of Bethlehem, we picked up that tune and we carried it in our hearts. And we took it with us wherever we went, and we started singing it and sharing it. We are God's children who are singing praise. We are the ones who are lifting up God, who are praising God, who are denying ourselves so that we can lift God up. That's who we are. And we do it in a variety of ways. Some of us do it by, by the, the sheer faithful obedience. To, to the way of faith, to a rule of life, to trying to be holy, to being like God through reading our scriptures and the disciplines of prayer and the efforts, obeying the Ten Commandments, things like that. Some of us are striving to do it by our, our passion and, and our, our song that bursts forth from within us and the words that we cannot contain in our heart, but they just flow. Others of us use our hands. We go and we offer help, kindness, and love, hope in the midst of despair. And all of this is an act of worship, an act of saying, like Psalm 148 says so clearly, praise the Lord. It's an act of worship when we pick up a hammer to go help someone in the community. It's an act of worship when we go shopping at the grocery store and get an extra canned good because we know somebody in our community is hungry. It's an act of worship whenever the choir struggles, as I know you do, to hit just that right note. It's an act of worship when the faithful soul struggles to get up in the morning on Sunday but comes anyway. It's an act of worship when a child gets held by their parents and makes wonderful noises in the midst of our congregation. It's an act of worship that tells us who we are. We're God's children, and we get the privilege of saying hallelujah, praise the Lord because of who God is and because of what God has done. Amen? So, this is Low Sunday. We're breaking the barrier. I know you all are uncomfortable with this. Name God. In the scriptures, in the Psalms, they were very fond of naming God. Name God. You know, we, Emmanuel, there we go, get started. Give me another one. King of Kings. King of Kings. Father. Lord of Lords. Giver of life. Giver of life. Prince of Peace. Prince of Peace. Counselor. Counselor. <laughs> Yahweh. Yahweh. Savior. Savior. Now. Let's praise God, not just in His name, but let's praise God for what God has done. What has God done? It's not rhetorical. He loved. He, loved. he forgives. Us. He forgives. Gives us hope, gives us life blesses us challenges to be better challenges us to be better <laughs> gives us grace and peace he lights the way 
He lights the way. Isn't this fun? It's good to be able to stop and simply say, you are God. Praise the Lord. You have done amazing things. Praise the Lord. And that's what Psalm 148 is all about. Can you say, praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. I got joy. You got joy? So let's sing joy to the world, hymn number 246. Will you stand as we sing? In the Psalms, one of the Psalms describes us as human beings as being a little below the angels and just barely above the beasts, that we are the grass that is here today and gone tomorrow. Yet God chooses us here, now, today, to be a part of this light, to be a part of this Christmas light that is carried into the world of darkness to shine and to show praise, to give glory to God. Go with this song in your heart. Go with joy. Follow the acolyte and carry the light into the world. Go with God and go in peace. care and love to someone who is dying. Can you do that for me? Because these poinsettias, they need a home. So I, I'm asking everybody here, everybody here, I don't care if you bought a poinsettia or not, please take one of these mission projects home. Thanks be to God. Amen.